Hello and welcome back. Today's video, as promised, we're going to be taking a tour of this tank right here. And this is a very special tank because it was escaped by a master aquascaper, Mr. Stephen Chong. Hey so, guys. Yes, today we are going to take an in-depth tour, ask questions about this tank, about his whole setup here for contest aquascaping. So let's go and start. All right, so where should we begin? Uh, how about we talk about the tank size? What what size tank is this? Sure, this is the same as the tank that you got in your room, Rio. So 120, 50, 50, 80 is new standard size. Uh, before I had a 45, 45 contest, but you know, 45 and 50 is just such a huge jump. It's totally different. That five centimeters. Yeah, it's it's huge, and I can imagine that going to 55 or 60 would be awesome too but yeah. the jump from 45 to 50 is just the biggest the most consequential and i just love this tank this tank is awesome um i think in a lot of a lot of markets ada is kind of a real primo brand but here you know it's just at that price point where you know it's competitive or you don't feel like buying any other brand but ADA because the price difference is too... Like this tank costs 750 US dollars. And so for a tank of this size, um, at that price, and the fact that, you know, it's regularly available because of ADA, I couldn't have upgraded um, to, the, to this type of contest size easily if it weren't for ADA's tanks. Like otherwise, I'd have to get a custom build and it would have cost like 2000 or 3000 at least for the makers here in Japan. But yeah, I, I love this ADA tank. Hopefully the average consumer can come to appreciate this size too, but I just love it. You guys gotta get one of these. Yes, and having a 90 centimeter, the 90P is also great. Yeah. But this just takes it a step further and you get more, you, you can create more depth. That's what you're saying about the extra five centimeters, right? Yeah. Just the space you get to play with at the back and the height. Yeah. And how about this stand? This is a, is this a, like a custom made stand or? Uh, yeah, this is a custom made stand. I, I wouldn't be able to tell what the maker is. So Tokyo Aquascaping Union was originally founded by a guy named Noriyuki Shito, who has an aquarium here in Tokyo. Yes. Um, and he was the one who, I guess, popularized this type of stand build amongst the TAU members. So if you go to Fukada-san's place too, it's mostly this type of stand. Yeah, and Ono-san has something similar to this. Right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice, simple looking stand. And I really like this. And it's not your regular DIY stand. You don't see like screw holes in the side and stuff like that. So Exactly, though. I, I've yeah. screwed all sorts of things into it for my own purposes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a, a really nice looking setup. Let's talk about the lights you have running here. So these are Max Light Pro. Um, I have the wonderful honor of being sponsored by Life Aqua, a Hong Kong company that makes these um, these LED lights. Really powerful, really natural looking colors. Yeah. Um, they're not overly blue. They have kind of pretty much a color tone similar to sunlight, but the colors aren't flushed out. They're full, you know, RGB. And one thing I noticed, especially compared to when I had Solar One metal halides on top. Still, I love metal halides for the shimmering effect, and they're very beautiful too, but like, the one thing I love about the LEDs, and these ones in particular, it just flushes so that even in when you um, look at the shady parts of the tank, inside the shadows, and you know, we diorama aquascapers really like to make shadowy areas. There's yeah. still light in there, and the plants are still growing in there, right? When I saw these like thick leaf tenellum growing into and underneath that piece of wood, I was like, wow, <laughs> they're doing all right under there. That is cool. It just adds more detail. I also have Maxi Light CO2 inline, um, yeah, diffuser. right, inline diffuser. The filtration you're running on this tank is a canister filter. Yeah, Eheim Pro E3. Just the one? Yeah, just filter. the one. Okay, wow, you can see the light there. Is that the power? Yeah, the, or that's the, the flow? speed. Yeah, the flow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think this is like, this is the minimum spec that you need for a tank this size that's going to be a contest tank. Um, you know, very good flow. I've never had issues with this filter. 
Would like another one though. Hey, you can never have enough, yeah. right? <laughs> Do you prefer using filters with those trays inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you need different layers for different types of filtration. Here I have, um, I have Seachem Purigen and I have Brakoru. The super oh, yeah, powerful yeah. carbon product here in Japan. So yes. I'm like, over, but you know, you see all this wood in here, right? Yeah. So I'm like going overboard with the tannin removers. Yes. Um, and then I have Seachem Matrix and I have pumice stone. Okay. And I have, you know, a few other different types of actual, you know, professional grade, you know, biofilter media. How about sponges? Any sponges or uh, uh, wool in there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, you do need fine, um, uh, fine sponge and also the standard coarse sponge. Okay, because if you look at the ADA system, their their filters are similar to the Eheim Classic, the round ones, mm. and they they don't have any layers in it, and they just uh, usually use like one type of media and that's it, and they don't use the wool as well. So yeah, I I kind of prefer having physical and biological filtration. I guess like the, the boxes do take up extra space, but you don't necessarily need to pack the whole filter full of media. Like a um, little bit of a pro tip, if you keep only like two thirds or three fourths of it filled, um, then you know, there's less stuff in the way of water flow. So yeah. you can get a faster water flow yeah. with the same filter. I've realized that too. Yeah. That's it. I mean, the green aqua guys say, fill as much as you can. You want as much space for bacteria as possible. And there's truth to that uh, philosophy as well. This tank is your contest tank, but for which, which contest? So this tank was designed for CIPS 2021. Uh, but 2021 is going to be, you know, we're in a world pandemic. Who knows what's going to happen every day. Uh, but 2021 CIPS has been announced to be combined with 2022 next year. So um, I will be entering this tank again next year. Or maybe it will be automatically pushed forward to that contest. Probably also going to enter into the IIAC, which is the Taiwanese International Contest. Um, those contests are open publish, open share, so I have no problem with you guys checking out this Aquascape. Um, I think for folks who are familiar with my works, you know, you'll know that I really like high impact diorama type Aquascapes, but um, I don't know, with the material I had around and the timing and there was just plants that I really wanted to try too. All the plants came from Ono Masashi's I IAPLC work this year, actually. Yeah, and it looks like a kind of different style that you would usually set up. Right, right. So ultimately what I'm pointing at is I decided to make more of a nature aquarium style aquascape. Yes. But you can see it still has got kind of the tenets of like, you know, I guess the Fukataism, the big diorama, yeah. uh, progressive style, big powerful focal points, viewpoint in the middle. Uh, details and a sense, use of space to bring everything into the middle and focus the viewer. Actually, if you bend down really low, it's gonna be hard with the camera maybe, but I really like that hole. Oh yes, down. that hole is awesome. Originally, wow. see, so that is a natural hole that exists in this giant piece of driftwood. Yeah. So that's a really cool feature of this piece. Um, originally when I got this piece, I wasn't sure, I thought that that should have been the viewpoint, but you know, if I just put that in the center of the aquarium, um, I realized that like the experience ends just by looking in the hole. Yeah. It's a little bit too fast, a little bit too boring. So what I did was I used the natural hole in this piece and the natural hole in that piece and kind of made them windows. So I'm still trying to bring the viewer to the middle, the area where the pieces kind of hug around each other. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, instead we're using the natural holes as windows that make the whole aquascape feel less heavy. Because, you know, if this was full black and full black here, then they'd feel like blocks, right? Yeah, it'd be, be kind, kind of, of boring. Exactly. But because, you know, there is that empty space under the wood or that empty pocket here in this wood, yeah. there's a connection between front and back. and. What you have to do when you make holes like this is make sure that you're really consistent in elements that go behind the hole. Whoopsie. <laughs> like for instance, these pieces of linear wood start up over here and you can still see them through the hole and you can still oh, yeah, see them into can. the middle. But then when they reach the middle, that's where they end. Yeah. So your eye will follow the wood and feel like it's a nat 
In other words, you don't stop and think that's the end point. The wood, ke- the little, the thin branchy wood keeps going, so your eye keeps going until it reaches the end here in the yeah, middle. Yeah, it does. Wow. Whereas, like on this side, you can see lava stone through this hole, and there's still lava stone on this side. So it feels like the lava stone that's in the background, in the middle, continues and keeps going all the way until this yeah, point. Yeah, it does. And there's actually this piece of. Um, just wood sitting on top here as well, but this also continues, 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 and then you see just a little bit of twigs on this side, so you feel like that is also making a straight line. Wow. Uh, behind this big hunk of wood on the right side, the goal is to, you know, make sure that the viewer doesn't think that this is an end point or that's an end point. Clearly, everything. Uh, whether it's the small branches or the rocks or even the plants like all of these elements should continue uh, wrap themselves around the back and meet in the middle uh, and make sure that you know everything what happens is that those elements continuing wrapping around the back makes it feel like there is a continuation of the same universe on both sides in other words there's a united space in the background which makes it feels even more spacious. But all those different elements come together in the middle in order to focus the eye, you know, right in this one spot where you can really appreciate the red blixa leaves and the interesting feature of this wood's face. You're gonna be able to show them the contest photo because I'm gonna send it to you. You guys can get an opportunity to see um, the final picture. Uh, but in the final picture too, the way Blixa Alberti comes from both sides and there's a ripple here in the middle. Um, it feels like the leaves are pushed back on both sides and they're also hugging and wrapping around the main driftwood. Kind of making a red halo around the main hardscape. Yeah, and now, right now, as we're filming this, the tank isn't at that contest level. Am yeah, I right? <laughs> yeah I, I, I tend to be kind of lazy on the off-season at times. Yeah, um, that's the same with me, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't do any maintenance like last month, uh, but then Ryo told me he was coming to Tokyo, so panic mode for the last three days. <laughs> I see the red plant is like one of the focal plants, I must say. Right, we've mentioned it a few times, but yeah, Blixa Alberti is the main plant of this aquascape. It is the, you know, it's the one that really draws the eye and makes the audience go, wow. Um, so I was really impressed when I saw this in Onosan's IPLC tank and I thought, I gotta give this, I gotta give this plant a shot. So, which is why I had him send, send me a whole bunch of it. Uh, then we have Taiwan Lotus here, which... The round one. Yeah, it's really interesting texture. Um, and actually some of these, like, you can see I kind of cheated. They're like floating, like they're not actually uh, attached to the plant. It's just a flowing leaf. But the cool thing about this plant is that it'll actually start growing roots from this cutoff end. Oh, wow. That yeah. Cool. I even threw a couple of these leaves in a bucket doing maintenance and then I forgot to throw them away. And they actually started growing roots in the bucket and turning into a full plant that I could replant. So this will. So I can float this guy here, you know, just to look attractive for the camera, but it'll grow into legit its own plant here and be able to survive in that spot just like this. That's a super cool tip. And then, uh, Potomagetan Gai, this was from my 2019 Aquascape Amano Gawa. Yep. Um, Hairgrass Risia is Amano's combination, but Potomagetan Gai is a third that goes really nicely with them. And those are the three main plants of that aquascape but it's like a pond plant and it's orange and fine colors kind of look really cool against the alberti and then i have a lot of tape plants valisneria nana and then hair grass and also aerial collin feather duster in the back is this fine leaved plant that kind of looks like hair grass but yeah it's a beautiful green color that plant i guess to go with the blixa alberti in back we have blixa japonica in front hair grass and then i've just let um, thick leaf tenellum and Valsneri Nana kind of go crazy and do their own thing. The moss on the wood, is that just regular java moss? Uh, yeah, well this is actually what ADA is selling as Christmas moss and then I also have peacock moss up on top. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's not java moss. No, not java. But I do like straight up regular java moss as well. Can you tell us how you um, fertilize your plants for your contests? 
Sure, sure. This is straight up ADA method. So pretty minimalistic in terms of nutrients. Um, the main work is being done by the substrate. I do have ADA aqua soil as well as um, power sand underneath it. And you know the fertilizer additives that ADA has created for their newer line because it's not as powerful as the original aqua soil. Um, in other words, the main nutrient source is in the substrate, but otherwise I supplement with only two really. Uh, I'm running low on green brighty K neutral. I'm going to have to go to Ginsu to get some. And then green brighty mineral. Um, pretty much just these two uh, will supply the micronutrients that the plants need alongside of CO2, good light, and good maintenance, um, good water changes. The conditions of the filter, the biology inside the tank, and making sure the plants get enough light and CO2 are the most important things. And then just on top of these micros, and then um, if you have fish, if you have fish and you're feeding them fish food, they'll be getting the nitrogen and phosphorus from there. So I don't really feel a need to dose macros, but you certainly can. Um, and I have, I, ha I do have sea chem phosphorus here just in case uh, when I feel like I need it. ADA doesn't have a phosphorus source, but like again, um, phosphorus actually features in fish food and is something that the plants can get from there. That's not a typical background that you can get, right? Can you talk about a little bit about that? Oh yeah, this isn't a light screen. Um, and I, I know I talked about how I planned all the elements from the wood and the plants to arrange to wrap themselves around towards this middle viewpoint. So I really needed the background to do that as well. Um, and I wanted a blue kind of halo around the back of the tank um, and if you see below like it actually is blue on the surface near the top closest to us and white in the middle right around where the wood is oh, going yeah. to exit so I needed that level of control so I decided to just paint it myself um, if you take a look over the back this is actually a hand painted background um, simple white uh, foam board and then I have blue acrylic paint painted on both sides and then white into the middle. Um, I was actually a painter before I was an aquascaper, so this is pretty simple, right? Not a whole lot of technical work, but just getting as much fine color from the middle. Um, I think like spray paint might look more natural in terms of a fine grain, but you know, if you put like a sheet of plastic, clear plastic on top of this. When you take the photo shoot, it'll just be completely unnoticeable. And actually, even in person, because of, I guess, water, um, you know, water bending light, it's not really that noticeable when you look at it through the tank as it is right now. Yeah, you can't tell at all. This is DIY, so basically anybody can make something like this right <laughs> exactly and the cool thing is you get to play around with whatever color you want and i think you have a few different types yeah you can see like um everything in this room has some practical application but um i've had a black i have a black board for a black background um and then you can see even some places torn off when I've actually bumped into it and stuff, but you can paint over that. And this green and white modeled background is one that I custom made for my 2017 Aquascape. That was world rank 525, but I still really like that scape. It's one that features, red, what was it called? Red flame moss. Um, Kalaglossa species. Oh, you're trying to create like a ocean inside the sea oh, image. I was actually trying to imitate um, this river called Cano Cristalis that has, you know, red water plants filling up the tank. Um, Chris Lookup has really amazing photos of it online as does um, Mikolji. But like, um, yeah, so to feature red really well, um, I knew I didn't want a white background for that aquascape. Um, green is the contrasting color of red. This is also what you're seeing when you put red and green plants together in an aquascape. But basically, if you mix red and green, because they're opposite colors, they both become more dull. If you put them directly next to each other, both of them pop more. So you can use, you can ma manipulate red and green together 
to either make them weaker and more subtle or make them really pop. Um, and that's something that you can play with in terms of color theory. Uh, blue and orange work in a very similar way and um, I've actually done that in past layouts as well. Mostly Silent Pool which had like, you know, really, really prominent blue features as well as orange fins on my fish. We talked about CO2 but we didn't specify how much you're putting into uh -huh. this tank. Like, how, how much CO2 do you inject into your contest aquariums? Okay, well, you want to make sure that you have enough. So, um, without stressing the fish, without stressing the fauna, you want to make sure that you have enough that the plants are happy with the CO2 level from lights on to lights off, meaning that you have CO2 turned on three hours before the aquarium is even going on because you want to bring the overall CO2 availability up as the plants are being um, getting into their photo period. Okay. What I do is I have, I do CO2 calibration, which means I use a pH meter um, to gauge, you know, what, because when you're adding CO2, it's going to naturally drop the pH. So you want, this is a tool that you can use to make sure that every day you're delivering enough CO2 and the right amount of it. There are guides online to help you learn how to do CO2 calibration with one of these meters. You, you said three hours before the lights turn on. That's the first time That's I've right. heard that because I've heard people say uh, one hour. I think I think George Farmer said like one hour and then Green Aqua said two hours. If I'm not mistaken, I, I must have heard somewhere, but you're the first time, you're the first person that I heard say three hours, so. Uh, three hours comes from Dennis Wong's website. Oh, okay. um, I think it's called Advanced Planted Tanks, but he has like full guides on a lot yeah. of different information. The really two. great. I think two hours can work. I think uh, one hour can also work. Um, I haven't seen any stressing out in the fish at three hours. Um, though, I guess like skimmer and, you know, good water flow will make you less worried about that. We didn't talk very much about the fish in this tank. So you've got Espe rasboras in this tank and they're they're really really stunning. Mm. So is there a reason why you picked that those fish? Yeah, it might have taken us some time to get around to talking about the fish because it's a very standard pick for, you know, planted aquascape. Yeah, especially. And you're not the type of person who goes for those standard fish. Right? <laughs> yeah, I usually pick something a lot more oddball. Uh, but Espe rasbora or um, Heteromorpha rasbora, they're pretty, you know, standard picks. These guys I decided to go with this time because originally I was planning to go with Odessa barb, which was also Ono-san's fish, um, really matches the color of, you know, the, the Blixa. Blixa and the plant choices this time. But, you know, after initial scaping, initial working with these plants and seeing how the aquascape came together, um, this is also my first time working with really, really big plants like this. So I wasn't, sh I wasn't thinking about how much presence they had versus the amount of space that I had. And thinking about it, I thought the Odessa bars would just be competing too much with the plants and competing too much for space yeah. um, visually. So in order to make everything else seem bigger, make the plants seem more dramatic, make the hardscape seem more dramatic, I really felt like this skate needed a smaller fish. Ultimately, the conclusion that I came to was, you know, we just gotta go with something more standard. We're gonna go with Rasbora Espe, a very, very um, popular fish for planted aquascapes. Really small, very colorful, and similar to the Odessa Barb, you know, they have that orange color and um, strong black markings as well that go really nicely with this plant selection, but their size, their size and schooling behavior is just, you know, much more effective for this aquascape. And you'll see um, in the contest photo, I actually got them to school up and over, like they're making a line right in front of this driftwood line. So they're, they're going with the line of the hardscape. It looks really cool and it matches well with the, you know, the strokes of the Blixa leaves. All right, there's one thing I need to ask you. And that that is this thing. What what on earth is all this thing right here? Because I keep <laughs> I keep bumping my head into this <laughs> thing. Can you explain like what is this curtain here for? This is a curtain rail. Yes. Um, you guys know that you don't want your light. I you guys know that you don't want your tank to be facing direct sunlight, right? So, um, fix that issue here. <laughs> 
essentially like if you take a look up here all of this in my aquarium room is open window and I could install curtains up there in order to make this whole fish room really dark. Yeah, you've got the curtain rail. Right, but it would mean that our living room is constantly dark and it would mean that my wife and kids would be really unhappy with me to be living in a really dark, <laughs> gloomy room. So that ain't happening. I can only bring the curtain up to here. Um, and so what I need to do in order to protect my tank and my hobby from getting overly algae infested is to shut this curtain during the day. Um, I got these, you know, full 100% light blocking curtains from Muji. In retrospect, I really should have gotten the black ones because then they would have been useful in... Uh, the contest photo. Yeah, exactly. When doing the photo shoot for contests or video as well. But they look nice. They don't make the room feel gloomy and um, yeah. they work just as well, you know, for keeping the biology of the tank uh, in good condition when we're doing maintenance. That's kind of cool. You've got your own mini little room just for the fish yep, tank. Yeah, up here, curtain. It's a little bit cool. of... <laughs> oh, and what is this? Are these your tools? Yeah, yeah, these are my wow. office tools. Can we tools. take a look at some of the tools that you use frequently? They always hang up here. I also take pride in the way I've set them up like this. This is one of those... Um, you know, I guess, mini pocket shelves. Yeah. And these were originally pockets, all three, but I cut them so that they would be straps instead. And I can, you know, have uh, smallest tools sticking out here, medium and large. Um, also, it has a hook and I've water duct taped this end to be waterproof. And I can like leave it on the edge of the aquarium anywhere I want while doing maintenance. That is cool. Yeah. Or if I'm super, for whatever reason, I can put them down here too. <laughs> like, and of course up here. Like hurts and rail. Yeah. Yeah. I well, accidentally put them here once. That was not a good idea because that's where this bend comes oh. from. But yeah, so put them here and then I can take out whatever I want. Like, these are, I probably, an eye catcher. These are stainless steel wow. tweezers from Tokyo Hands. This only cost me 2,500 yen, or like 25 USD. Those are the largest pin sets, tweezers I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, was it 52 centimeters in total yeah. length? Wow. You can, and when, you, when you're feeling super lazy and you don't want to get your hands wet, <laughs> you know, lazy boys tweezers. Uh, but actually, I have quite a bit of control, um, even at the tip, considering how fine they are. Like, um, you know, I, there's nothing I want to grab right now, but yeah, I can grab that pedal, pebble, no problem. So these are a great buy. I haven't seen them anywhere except in Japan and except in Tokyo hands. Um, you go to the tool section, hardware section, continuing to sell for 2025 bucks. If you ever come to Japan, you got to get one of these. All right, I got to get one. Of course, my go-to tweezers are always the ADA. And I have the original yeah, you logo. Yeah, the special one. Yeah. Because they don't sell these anymore. Right, this is circa 2007. Um, and then, you know, big thicker tweezers from ADA. These are for, um, you know, Bigger plants definitely yeah. were helpful for like cryptocorins and Blixa this time. Yeah. And then um, obviously you need razors. And I, this is um, Stosan's, you know, special <laughs> his favorite. Oh, he nice. actually cut this off um, and ground it around. He custom makes these for customers who order them. An aquarium. This is really useful because without the end of the back end of the pro razor. It's a lot easier to, you know, get oh, into yeah, any... Oh yeah, and that back end. What I find is the problem for me is I always bump it on the light. Yeah. Like whenever I'm pulling it out, yeah. I always bump it on the light and that gets kind of annoying. So That can happen. But yeah. I enjoy having both lengths around. Yeah, I guess it's a... Uh... And then, you know, sand scraper, pretty typical. This is... Oh, that's from the home center. Yeah. You can get that at the home center. Super useful. This is what... You... Whenever people complain to tell me that they cannot um, do maintenance when hardscape is near the, too close to the glass. I said, you know, you can. This is what you use to get in there, right? You know, it can reach anywhere yeah. inside. To and it's white, so 
if there's algae, you can actually see the algae in front of the white. Oh yeah, you can. This is really cool. And mm -hmm. then, uh, I like this still, but even maybe even better is if you can get one like this, which is a straight up triangle. It's flat on all sides. Cause you can use this side as a flat, as a sand leveler. Um, oh, yeah. Like I can get in here and level the sand flat even all the way to the corner yeah. and keep a pretty straight consistent line all the way across. Of course scissors, um, you know, pretty, I have two in here. Standard short curve. This is like pretty much the one that you need to do everything. Straight is also good, but um, unless you're going to get ADA or similar grade brand, um, you know, regular scissors are fine, but these do help you a lot getting in and around. And then I have the curved ones, but bend ones, they're not super easy to use, but they are little just, bit heavy, right? they are heavy, but there are some tasks, especially when you have like, you're trying to get into places like in the back there, or this skate, not so much. It's pretty, because this is NA style, it's pretty easy to get yeah. in anywhere around the tank, but in like some of the really sophisticated dioramas that have plants growing in hard to reach places, it's almost a re requisite. Like the bottom right, um, area of my aquascape this year in 2021 it was just impossible to trim under the huge piece of wood that was coming over in silent pond and getting to the plants on this side without these guys and i'd say even in this aquascape because like this point where the let's move this over um uh, this point here where the lotus is coming in it's hard to get my hand in there because yeah. this wood is really close to the glass and i'll bump the wood out of place but with these this is pretty easy to get in there. I really hope you enjoyed this tour of Stephen Chong's Aquascape. Such a beautiful scape. Let us know in the comments down below what you guys think about this tank because I think it's amazing and I can't wait to see the works that he comes up with next year, especially for next year's IEPLC contest. And a link to Steve's scapes will be in the comments down below. That's his channel. Make sure you go subscribe to him because he's got some amazing tips and advice on aquascaping, especially if you want to enter those contests. So make sure to go check him out. Yeah, I'm really looking forward what you come up with next year though and all of you guys in 2022 best of luck i'll be here if you need any help as always if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss stuff like this and i'll see you guys next time take it easy